Folks, hello and welcome to your uh, topic three midweek bonus. I figured I would post another problem here for you. Uh, I got uh, teed up for you problem 825, which is algorithmic, which means uh, the problem will read the same, but uh, some of the numbers that you see here in this table might be a little bit different. So if you decide to use uh, my file, I will repost this after I post the video. Uh, please make sure that you uh, notice the difference in some of the numbers that I have versus what you have. Uh, let's see, Georgia Cabinets manufactures kitchen cabinets that are sold to local dealers throughout the Southeast. Because of a large backlog of orders for oak and cherry cabinets, the company decided to contract with three smaller cabinet makers to do the final finishing operation. For the three cabinet makers, the number of hours required to complete all the oak cabinets, the number of hours required to complete all the cherry cabinets, the number of hours available for the finishing operation, and the cost per hour to perform the work are shown here. So uh, cabinet maker one, two, and three, and then the four variables that we just discussed. Uh, it says, for example, cabinet maker one estimates that it will take 45 hours to complete all the oak cabinets and 63 hours to complete all the cherry cabinets. However, cabinet maker one only has 35 hours available for the final finishing operation. Thus, cabinet maker one can only complete about 78% of the oak cabinets if it worked only on oak cabinets and about 56% if he only he or she only worked on the cherry cabinets. Uh, in terms of decision variables, these are the decision variables that are declared for you and note that they are proportions. So what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve this to say uh, the proportion of each type of cabinet performed by each cabinet maker. So we got 0, 1, 2, and 3 uh, for the oak by cabinet maker, and then we got C1, C2, C3 for the cherry by each cabinet maker. And so I have laid out 0, 01 through C3 here, and then my decision variables uh, B4 through G4 will be right below that. Uh, in terms of these objective function coefficients, uh, since we're talking about the proportion of uh, work on each type of cabinet by each cabinet maker, uh, the because, uh, let's see, uh, 1485, let me explain where that comes from. First off, we know that the cost per hour uh, for cabinet maker one is $33 per hour, whichever type of cabinet he is, he is working on. If he were to complete uh, and we know that he can't because he only has 35 hours available. It, the, the, the amount of money that we would pay this cabinet maker at most would be uh, 45 hours times $33 per hour. And that's how we come up with 1485. Uh, for, let's see, for um, cabinet maker two working on the oak, uh, if he were to perform, he or she were to perform all of his work on uh, oak cabinets, we would pay 41, uh, let's see, $41 per hour times 41 hours. So that's how these objective function coefficients have been derived. And you'll see, I, I, instead of just putting the, the value itself in there, I'm showing the product of the dollar value and the appropriate number of hours so that you can take a look at that. Of course, the objective function is the sum product of the objective function coefficients in row five and then the decision variables in row four. Uh, let's see, what else do we need here? Let's talk about constraints. Uh, let's see, cabinet maker one, two, and three. Uh, cabinet maker one only has uh, 35 hours available, so he can spend, uh, let's see, uh, up to, of course, he's not going to get up to 45, uh, but uh, to do all the oak would be 45 hours, to do all the cherry would be 63 hours. And that has to be whatever those proportions of each of these uh, ends up being, that has to be less than 35. And then the same for cabinet maker two and cabinet maker three, again, 41 hours for the oak, 44 for the cherry, 34 for the oak, and then 31 for the cherry for cabinet maker three. So that is the limitation on the cabinet maker hours. And then we know that uh, since we want all the work done, the percentage of uh, the uh, oak done by each of the manufacturers or the, each of the finishers must be equal to one. And then the uh, aggregate work by the three cabinet makers on the cherry must be equal to one as well. So let me make sure I have this format cells. 
this should be a number with three decimal places. Yep, because these are going to be uh, decimal values between zero and one. So I think we're ready, let's see, I think we're ready to solve here. I think, uh, let's see, I got C6, B4 through G4, 9, 10, and 11, less than J, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And we'll go from there. Now, uh, before I do this, let me say that uh, there's a couple questions here that we need to add or that we need to address based on sensitivity data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve this and then I'm going to show you exactly what we need to do immediately after following this or after solving this to get the sensitivity data. Whenever you want sensitivity data, make sure that you have the simplex LP um, solver selected. Otherwise, you will not get the report that you want. So I'm going to solve this. And uh, before I get the sensitivity report, let's just see if this makes sense. Uh, let's see, these three values, 0 0.778, 0 0.222, that's equal to one, so that's good. And then, let's see, it looks like nothing there, but 361 and 639 is equal to one. So we've done the entire work, 35, 25, and 20. And so that all makes sense. So. Uh, again, because I want the sensitivity report or the sensitivity data, let's just click on sensitivity immediately after following and hit OK. And then what you'll see in your sheet is you'll see a new tab that shows up for the sensitivity report. And let me just remind you, make sure you're using the Simplex LP or you will not get the correct sensitivity report. So uh, let's see. Um, we have kind of gone through and done a, a visual check here. Uh, cabinet maker one used 35, uh, two used 25. Notice that cabinet maker three only used about two thirds of his hours. From a practical standpoint, uh, you can go over here and convince yourself of the reason why that's the case. Um, $60 an hour versus $33 an hour here, and then $60 an hour versus $41 an hour here. So from a practical standpoint, uh, that should make good sense to us that, uh, we're going to we're going to use uh, cabinet maker one and cabinet maker two to the uh, best extent possible. And then uh, we will uh, bring in cabinet maker three uh, to uh, to augment those two. One more time, let me just say that cabinet maker one spent all of his time working on oak. Uh, cabinet maker two spent some time working on oak and some on cherry and then uh, when we got to the uh, probably to the limitation of his number of hours, we brought in cabinet maker three to finish up. So that's the idea that we're going to want here when we go look at the sensitivity data. Before we do that, let's make sure we know what we're going to be asked here. It says if cabinet maker one has additional hours available, would the optimal solution change? And if cabinet maker two has additional hours available, would the optimal solution change? So let's look at the sensitivity report here. Remember, the top half of this uh, is related to the decision variables. And then uh, the bottom half here is related to the constraints. And the constraints that we want to look at here are in rows 21, 22, and 23, because hours one relates to cabinet maker one, uh, hours two relates to cabinet maker two, and so on and so forth. And remember, uh, cabinet maker one had 35 hours available, cabinet maker two had 30 hours, and cabinet maker three had uh, 30 hours available. Uh, let's see, cabinet maker one and two used both of their hours. Here's the one where we used about two thirds of the hours. Whenever you have a binding constraint, meaning that the final value is equal to the right hand side value, like we have in these two cases, uh, the shadow price is going to be greater than zero, meaning that uh, there, it'll tell us by how much the, we could expect the objective function to change and whether or not the optimal solution is going to change as well. And so the interpretation here is this, uh, the allowable increase says uh, I could, uh, or cabinet maker one could lose up to 10 hours and the, the cost or the change in the objective function would be actually a, uh, an, a, an increase in price, uh, in this case, because minus or, or subtracting hours, so a negative number of hours, <clears throat> excuse me, times a negative shadow price would be an increase, negative times negative is positive, about $5.52 for each hour that would be taken away from this cabinet maker. 
On, uh, conversely, this is saying that uh, for each hour that we give Cabinet Maker One up to 15.88 hours, the objective function will decrease by $5.52. And then similarly over here, the same interpretation, uh, you can lose 28, you can add 14. And this is a price about $1.27 that would increase the price for hours lost and $1.27 of a decrease for each hour that uh, Cabinet Makers 2 or Cabinet Maker 2 is going to add. Let me see if I can go uh, prove this to you mathematically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add uh, on my other sheet, I'm going to add one more hour of finishing time to uh, Cabinet Maker 1. And let's see if the objective function goes down by $5.52. So let me keep that in mind here. 5.52. And let's see, the current objective function is uh, 33... 68.33 and let's see let's just take the difference in those two this minus this so when i give uh cabinet maker one one more hour and i resolve the model number one we're going to see a change in the objective function meaning uh, i'm sorry in the optimal solution this mix of uh proportions will change and I'm thinking that the objective function is going to go from about 3368.33 to 3362.81 plus or minus a couple cents based on the rounding. So I let's see, I made the change here. Let's go to the solver. We should just be able to resolve this. Again, what we're going to look for is a change in the optimal solution and a change or a decrease in the objective function by about $5.52. So yes, first of all, we notice a change, 80%, uh, 20%, and then we see them change here. And the objective function went to 3362, 3362, 81 versus 82. And like I said, you probably see a penny or two difference based on the rounding, but that is the interpretation of the shadow price in your sensitivity report. So the ability to play what if games with a sensitivity report is always gonna be easier than going back and resolving this model hundreds and hundreds of time if you're just comfortable with the sensitivity report. So I hope this is helpful. I'll post this for you. And if there's any questions, please let me know and uh, enjoy the rest of the week. Take